That's a you problem, not an airline problem. The more you look at her arguments, the more they just crumble. It's an unrealistic expectation. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I am so happy to have you here with me again this week. If you are new here and this is the first time you are seeing my face, welcome. I make weekly videos dissecting internet nonsense, so if you're into that type of thing or you like today's video, I hope that you'll consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and make sure that you never miss another upload from me. We know here on the channel that it is not unusual to hear fat activists online claiming that nobody owes anybody else health, right? We don't owe health to anyone. But what's caught my attention recently is that while they're shouting into the void about how no one owes health, they are simultaneously making demands of private businesses and private entities that now owe them things simply because they are fat. We've heard those demands from fat activists online like Fat Fab Feminists who claimed that New York subway turnstiles were too small. And also most recently, we've heard Samira talking about how all fashion brands should make 4X, 5X, and 6X clothes. But today, 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 you guys, we are gonna talk about a fat activist who's been on my mind for a while because I'm pretty sure this officially broke like six months ago. I'm always a little bit behind. But this fat activist has been on my mind. She caught attention when she started demanding that airlines give free seats to plus size passengers. Her name is Jay Bay, and we're gonna look at her demands of the airline industry together. Also, in completely full transparency, I was totally planning on coming here, just brushing on this airline conversation before moving on to her new demands of hotels. But there was just so much here for us to talk about that I'm gonna have to go ahead and split these up into two videos. Let's start by taking a look at her original demand that airlines give free seats to plus size passengers. Have you heard stories of plus size travelers being ridiculed, humiliated, or even removed from flights because of their size? It's a common fear among the plus size community and it's absolutely unacceptable. Join my petition calling on the FAA to require all airlines to have a written official customer of size policy for plus size travelers. This policy will provide accessible additional seats, clear communication, reimbursement, accommodations, and employee training. As my petition states, all plus size passengers should be provided with an additional seat or two or three depending on their size and need during a flight for comfort. Under this policy, airlines should also offer a straightforward refund process for those who are buying additional seats independently. Under this policy, employees must be trained to handle sensitive situations and provide appropriate customer service. Sign this petition to demand that airlines take concrete steps towards making air travel more inclusive and accommodating for all passengers. Let's ensure that everybody can fly comfortable without fear of discrimination. Sign my petition now, link in bio. This is the video that went viral. Um, going as far as being picked up by news sources, it was talked about all over uh, by my colleagues here on YouTube. It caught people's attention that she was demanding that airlines give fat people free seats. And in this video we've just seen together, we can see she's clearly advocating for customer of size policies. Um, and that includes for her free seats, accommodations, refunds, reimbursements, and staff training. So she puts these demands in this video, releases it into the internet universe, it goes viral. And then as people started reacting with it, um, she started making some videos to try to clarify what she was actually asking for. If you assume that this petition right here is solely about getting free seats for people of size, let me clarify. This petition is about ensuring that air travel is comfortable for everyone, regardless of their size. This petition is about plus size people, tall people, people with disabilities, and so many more. However, as a plus size traveler myself, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and plus size travelers everywhere who have also experienced discomfort and discrimination while traveling. We are calling on the FAA to require that all airlines implement a clear customer size policy. This policy should include clear guidelines on accommodating larger passengers. Travelers of size often face physical discomfort and health risks when forced to occupy only one seat on an airplane. This petition is not just about free seats for travelers of size. It's about creating a more inclusive and accessible environment for all. Before we get too far into this whole thing, can I just, can we just take a moment to define what discrimination means? Because 
it is a word that gets thrown around quite a lot by fat activists, and I don't think they know what it means. So let's take a look at the definition. Amnesty International defines discrimination as follows. Discrimination occurs when a person is unable to enjoy his or her human rights or other legal rights on an equal basis with others because of an unjustified distinction made in law, policy, or treatment. Not fitting into an airline seat is not discrimination because flying is not a right. It is a privilege. It is not owed to us. And it's fascinating for me to watch content creators like Jay Bay and other fat activists who are so freely demanding these seats as though it's their right. Um, it's kind of an interesting observation of humanity and how things become so regular for us and we come to depend on them and then we just decide that these are these are rights, right? We have rights to these things. And we all do this, right? I'm not immune to this. You're not immune to this. Sorry to tell you. We all do it where we're just like, yeah, that thing is so regular to me. I have a right to, to access that thing. And it's even more fascinating to me that it's about airline travel because we've gotten so used to flying, right, from point A to point B, making travel really quick, that it's almost as if we've forgotten that every single time we take a flight, we are putting our trust and our money into a lot of mathematics, engineering, and physics to allow a tin can full of passengers, fuel, um, food, and luggage to travel through the sky. <laughs> like, it's a very weird concept that should by all rights be improbable, but is not. And somehow we've decided that that is now a right. Is just wild to me. She does literally think it's a right. She has said it. I myself have personally experienced discomfort and discrimination during flights. And I believe that air travel should be accessible and comfortable for everyone, regardless of their size or abilities. My firsthand experience and the stories I've been told emphasize the need for change. For instance, my partner and I have received disapproving looks, negative comments, and someone has even refused to sit next to my partner while traveling on a plane. As a plus size traveler, I've also been forced to occupy only one seat before with a movable armrest, which left me with pain and bruises. These experiences highlight the necessity to advocate for better policies that protect the dignity and rights of all passengers. I'll say it one more time. Flying is not a human right. It is a privilege. After her petition went viral, she kept making more and more of this content, trying to clarify myths, dispel rumors, um, clear up misunderstandings about what she was actually demanding from the FAA. So let's take a look at one that she is attempting to tackle, which is the rumor or the myth that she is asking other passengers to foot the bill for these free seats. Today, I want to talk about my plus size travel petition that recently went viral. There has been a huge misunderstanding that I want other airline passengers to have to foot the bill for the suggested policy changes outlined in my plus size travel petition, but that's not true. Let's just keep it real. The airlines have had a history of price gouging customers and overselling flights. With that being said, they have continued to lower the standard of comfort and safety for all passengers. So it's time for the airlines to take responsibility of guaranteeing a better flight experience for all passengers. It's not the responsibility of the individual passengers they are supposed to be serving. Southwest Airlines offers competitive prices for their airplane tickets. They do this and offer an incredible customer size policy for plus size passengers and those who need more space. The Southwest customer size policy offers an additional complimentary airplane seat to those who need more room. They are able to do this without passing the cost on to other consumers. And if they can do it, then so can other airlines. She's not wrong in that flights are expensive and airlines sometimes do shitty things. This isn't new information for a lot of people. But what she doesn't seem to understand is that she she is actually asking other people to foot the bill because the changes that she is hoping to put in place are going to make flights more expensive. Airline companies are not going to lose profit. That's not the name of the game when it comes to running and owning a business, right? They're not just going to eat that. It's going to be passed on to the consumers. And she doesn't seem to realize that the things that she's advocating for are going to make flights more expensive for everyone. Let's break it down together using Jay Bay, her own words, as an example of what I mean. So 
we can see that she is very clearly advocating for a customer of size policy where customers of size or plus size um, passengers get two or more free seats from the airline so that they can fly comfortably. And even while making those demands, she made a TikTok telling her followers this. This is a great question. And as much as I've talked about buying two seats as a plus size traveler who wears a size 6X, I've never given you the real tea on how comfortable it is to sit in two seats. So let me break it down for you in this video. I wear a size 6X and so does my partner. When we travel, we sit together in a row of three. So our situation might be a little bit different than yours. Even though we get a row of three seats, I take up much more room than my partner does. And so we share the middle seat. So I'm taking up like one and a half seats. They're taking up just usually one. When we get three seats and we sit together, there is is enough room for us to both sit comfortably but it's a little bit of a tight squeeze and the thing that i find the hardest is the lack of leg room while two seats in economy is enough for me to fly comfortably of course i wish that i had a little bit more room especially when it comes to leg room all in all i will say if you're size 6x like me or smaller you will be able to travel comfortably in two economy seats has she never read if you give a mouse a cookie she's demanding that they give free additional seats to make flights more comfortable and then immediately contradicts herself saying even when i have two seats on a flight it's uncomfortable i still wish i had more x more y more z more leg room right if you give a mouse a cookie if you give her an inch she's gonna want a mile why are airline companies going to want to work with you if you're just gonna keep demanding more things for free if we continue looking into jbay's content uh we also find that she has reacted to a story that happened um, just this summer in 2023, where a British Airlines passenger got stuck on a plane. Plus size travelers deserve better. This article came out just a few days ago and we're gonna talk about it in this video. All I had to do was read the title of this article and I was automatically upset. A British Airway passenger was stuck in his seat for three hours after landing and had to be taken out of his first class seat with a hoist. What this passenger had to experience is unacceptable. And this is the exact reason why I started my plus size travel petition this year. And as a matter of fact, they actually link to the CNN article that talks about my petition in this article. I'm fighting every single day for inclusivity in the airline industry. That way things like this don't happen to plus size passengers because this is absolutely unfathomable. This passenger did what all those people who say to do in my comments, just simply upgrade to first class. And this should prove as an example to you why that doesn't always work or apply. This man was stuck in a seat, unable to move for nine and a half hours. That is not okay and nobody should have to endure that. That comes with pain, embarrassment, humiliation, and more. I want to pause for just a second to say that, oh my God, do I feel for this person. I cannot begin to imagine what it would have been like to be stuck in an airplane seat for three hours while an emergency crew had to come up with a plan and ended up taking the entire door off the plane to then hoist this person out of their seat. I cannot imagine the shame and guilt and embarrassment that would come with something like that happening. That said, I want to go ahead and put this whole thing into perspective, right? We're looking at the whole picture of the things that Jay Bay is demanding, um, while also looking at the other things that she's saying with her platforms. So she's demanding that plus size people get free seats um, because that will make their flight more comfortable, right? They need more space. As we saw, people are often advocating, we'll just buy a first class ticket. Now with this video, she's saying that even first class seats are not a solution. Even first class where there's all the space is not enough space. She is also saying that her solutions to create this space that is needed to make plus size travelers comfortable will not make flights more expensive. There is absolutely no way that those two things are true at the same time. I'm going to show you the picture of the seat, the whole picture that's behind J-Bay when she's making this video about the British Airlines. This passenger was flying first class with British Airlines. And news sources don't seem to know if he was flying on a Boeing 777 or a Boeing 787-9. But the image that they chose that was behind J-Bay in that clip is straight from the British Airlines website for their Boeing Dreamliner. First class seats on British Airlines flights are 22 inches wide. The only 
first class flight that differs offers a whopping 27 inch wide seat. If that seat size is not wide enough, it's almost two feet wide, right? Or in the case of the 27 inches, over two feet wide. If that seat is not big enough to accommodate a passenger of size, how large do they need to be? The wider the seats get and the more leg room that's offered, the less seats you can fit on a plane, which means it's less people until the plane is full, which means the tickets are going to be more expensive. It seems like she's essentially advocating for every plane to look like the first class section because they need the extra wide seats and all the leg room. There's no way that happens and ticket prices stay the same. Again, airline companies are not going to be the one to fall on the sword for plus size people. It's just not going to happen and it's an unrealistic expectation. And I just can't get over every time I read something or watch something by J-Bay, it's like she gets so close to the point and then she just misses it. It just goes right over her head or she purposefully looks the other way. It's very strange. Look at one of the captions on one of her petition videos. She writes, let's break it down. Airlines routinely charge for extra baggage, legroom, and even in-flight snacks. But when it comes to accommodating larger passengers, they often turn a blind eye to the discomfort and anxiety we face. Is it still right to squeeze someone into a single seat, causing discomfort for them and their fellow passengers when a simple solution exists? We aren't asking for luxury, we're asking for basic dignity. Do you see what I mean? She got so close to realizing that the simple solution she's asking for is for plus size people to just be able to easily purchase their second seat, just like someone else would purchase legroom, or just like you would purchase um, an extra bag to go in the cargo hold. If you need an extra accommodation, you pay for it. That is how airlines work. And it's the shift of blame that's so interesting to me, right? She poses that question. Is it right for airlines to squeeze plus size people into one seat? Well, the airline didn't do that to you. You did that to you when you opted to not purchase two seats. If you purchase one seat that you know you're too large for and then you squeeze into it, that's a you problem, not an airline problem. She says it as clear as day that other people have to pay for extra legroom and extra baggage and extra snacks on these flights. So it's laughable to me that at the end here, she's saying we're not asking for luxury. We're not asking for special treatment when that is exactly what you're asking for. If a tall person has to pay for extra legroom, then a wide person has to pay for additional space. It's literally the same. So you are asking for special treatment. The more you look at her arguments, the more they just crumble. Let's look together at one final clip where she's clarifying this petition. A common rebuttal that's been presented in response to my plus size travel petition is weight and balance issues. So let's get into it. It's being stated that if a lot of plus size people were on a plane, it would disrupt the weight and balance of an aircraft, causing it to be more difficult to control. And in response, I say, my petition could actually have a positive impact on weight and balance of aircraft. You might be thinking, well, how can an additional seat being given to a plus size passenger help? And this is how. The airline industry currently uses an average weight per passenger. That weight is 179 to 195 pounds. And when it comes to plus size travelers, this is obviously inaccurate. So if you weigh over that, the airline industry is currently not taking your weight into consideration when conducting weight imbalance calculations, which means this imbalance is probably already happening. But now suppose you give those plus size passengers the space they actually need. In that case, it will more accurately distribute the weight and balance across the plane. You also need to take into consideration that not every passenger on the plane is going to be plus size. And if these policies were implemented, it's not going to make more plus size people congregate on one single flight altogether. It would simply give the passengers on a flight that are plus size the ability to be more comfortable and safe. And those around them would be more comfortable as well. Listen, I'm going to be real with y'all. I studied history because math not my gig. I'm not good at it. I don't enjoy it. But even I understand that them using averages means they understand that some people are going to be below that average weight and some people are going to be above that average weight. Her implying that airlines are being dangerously irresponsible and putting passengers in a dangerous situation that only her petition can fix is again 
very interesting to me. She is out here making these demands without a lick of understanding the engineering, the mathematics, the physics that go into building, designing, and flying airplanes. If there were truly weight and balance issues with every airplane the way she is claiming because of these miscalculations, we would be seeing so many more horror stories in the news. According to a few internet sources um, that I was scouring, including the EAA, weight and balance on a plane is everything. If the weight and balance calculations are off, it can affect not only the plane's center of gravity, but also fuel consumption, speed, rate of climb, controllability, and even structural integrity. And while I was watching this TikTok of her talking about how her petition could potentially fix weight and balance issues, I thought I was losing my mind for a split second because she just very clearly in this video said the words, this will fix the problem because it will spread um, plus size passengers out throughout the plane and then they're taking up two seats, which then gets them closer to the average, right? That's essentially what she's trying to say. But if you read the actual language in her petition, she's asking them to create a very specific, like, plus size section of the airplane, which means instead of them being spread out throughout the airplane for weight and balance, they would all be congregated in one area of the plane. I just, you guys, you can't even make this stuff up. Now, because I'm a total nerd, I went ahead and looked into these average weights that they're using. I believe j -Bay stated it was somewhere between 175 and 195 pounds. What I actually found is that, deemed by the FAA, airlines have to calculate a minimum of 190 pounds per passenger in the summer and 195 pounds per passenger in the winter. I dare you guys to say pounds per passenger five times really fast because I'm really struggling to get those words out today. Anyway... Some airlines will calculate higher than this, um, but they cannot go lower than this because this is the standard set by the FAA. So according to j -Bay, she would still have a problem with that, right? Because they're miscalculating plus size passengers because again, we don't understand how averages work. So what's the way that they could potentially capture the new um, pounds per passenger average? Well, they would need to weigh people before they got on a flight so that they could see how much the average passenger weighs. This includes using a scale to capture that weight and capturing it for analysts to go ahead and look at that and then calculate new averages for those averages to be increased because that is what j -Bay is asking for. I read a few articles because again, they're already doing this, this is how they get the average weights, where airline staff were saying, this thing is essentially blind. It's just a scale, it captures the weight, and it just goes into some back-end software. No one sees your actual weight. It's not like they're advertising it on the screen behind the counter. Even the people at the computers can't see it. It's just simply captured for those analysts. That's a pretty good solution to, to what j -Bay is looking for. Wait, what? Even that won't appease j -Bay? As a plus size travel blogger and someone advocating for change in the airline industry, I want to talk about this article that just came out in Business Insider. A South Korean airline plans to weigh passengers, putting them on scales before each flight to comply with local laws. Let's talk about it. Many times people comment on my videos that passengers should be weighed so that we can charge them per weight. And that right there is straight up discriminatory. But this seems a little bit different. And let me tell you why. They are saying this data is to comply with local laws and it will be collected anonymously to use for survey purposes when it comes to weight and balance. This is temporary and will not be a permanent thing as of right now. They will not be using this data to charge overweight passengers more for their plane tickets. I want to know what your thoughts are on this. Drop them down in the comments. These fat activists never cease to amaze me. But j -Bay really grinds my gears because she's putting on this like brave face, right? She is so brave for going out and creating this petition and, and fighting the good fight because air travel is already expensive and if people have to purchase a second seat, then that's a barrier to them and their human rights, right? Because plus size people, according to fat activists, are poor 
and have bad socioeconomic statuses. So we need someone like Jay Bay out here fighting for us. In not one of these videos did Jay Bay acknowledge her status of privilege. Imagine flying so much as a size 6X person, her words, not mine, that you suddenly feel so free and confident to demand that airlines give you free seats. Not only is Jay Bay flying pretty frequently, she's also admitted that her and her partner just regularly buy a whole row of seats for themselves. I wear size 6X and so does my partner. When we travel, we sit together in a row of three. So our situation might be a little bit different than yours. Even though we get a row of three seats, I take up much more room than my partner does. And so we share the middle seat. So I'm taking up like one and a half seats. They're taking up just usually one. And just to put the nail in her own privileged coffin, she also told us this about when she used to solo travel. I totally get this question and I get asked this a lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and just address it right now. So for me, I always purchase a second seat now that I'm a size 6X. I also usually am traveling with my partner, so we get a whole row to ourselves. We're both plus size individuals. But when I'm traveling solo, there's a few different things that I do. In flying solo and when I was a size 4 and 5X, I was able to comfortably sit in a first class seat, just one, and I would do that anytime I was flying by myself. Now I rarely fly by myself because I have a partner and we're both plus size, so we just make sure to get anything that we need to accommodate ourselves comfortably. Please tell me again, j -Bay, how in need you are of these free seats. It's honestly insufferable to listen to people who can afford these amenities complain about how unaffordable they are. Like, that is just such a turnoff to hear them whine like they don't have the money to afford it when they clearly do. And to do that while promoting yourself as some sort of Robin Hood for the rest of the the poor plus size people, just, I, I cannot with that. It's just so off-putting to me. And just because J-Bay gives me the ick, I have to just include that I thoroughly enjoyed that she made multiple videos bragging about how her petition went viral how it's been seen by a hundred million people, but she only has 35,000 signatures at the time of filming this video. And while we know by now that math is not her strong suit, like, that is quite the ratio. Like, that means a majority of people do not agree with you, they weren't moved enough to sign your petition, and this probably doesn't bode well for your movement. But good try, j -Bay. I'm honestly a little mad that I didn't get to the hotel content because that is just wild. So we're gonna have to do another video <laughs> where we just look at these things that she's demanding. All right, that is all I have for you guys today. I'm curious to know, have you seen j -Bay around? Did you see this when it originally went viral that she was demanding the free seats? Had you seen any of her clarifying videos before today? Because she is not doing a good job of selling people on this petition. You all will have to let me know your opinions in the comment section below because you know I love to read them. And for any of my introvert friends out there who don't like to leave their opinions in the comments, I see you, I feel you, go ahead and leave me an airplane emoji today. Let's do an airplane because you know I love to hear from you guys as well. Thank you all so, so much for being here with me today. I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.